Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Garen and Gretchen from the Majors Guild from Wildlands by Osprey Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the third episode in this Wildlands painting series. And today we're painting Garen and Gretchen. They're the final two members of the Majors Guild, which is one of the factions that you can play as in Wildlands from Osprey Games. So just like the previous video in this series where I painted Edith and Hugo together in the same video, I'm doing the same again with Garen and Gretchen because neither of them have anything too complicated about them. So there isn't too much time that goes into painting just one of them. And so putting them together into this video, I'm going to sort of compare and contrast the way that I painted them. And similar again to Edith and Hugo, it's mainly going to focus on the different ways that I highlighted and shaded their cloak robe sort of things that they're wearing because for Garen here, it's entirely done with layering. I don't use any washes on his actual clothes. Whereas with Gretchen a bit later on, I use washes on all of her clothing. And the key difference there is how close together the different folds and recesses are in their clothing. Because with Garen here, um, there is a bit of distance between them. And also they're quite deep, the actual recesses. Whereas with Gretchen, they're quite close together, not quite as deep and the ridges are much pointier um, with Gretchen. Whereas with Garen here, they've got a nice fold or a nice gradual curve to the top of them. Um, and so with Gretchen, there's lots of really good spots for the washes to flow into. Whereas with Garen here, there's lots of smoother, broader surfaces and it becomes much, much easier with a character like Garen here where you have smooth surfaces for the wash to sit with an inconsistent thickness. And if that happens, then you it ends up drying in a blotchy kind of way. And so for Garen here, layering was the way to go because the washes weren't going to weren't going to be as easy to keep an, a, in a nice, um, consistent thickness. Whereas with Gretchen later on, perfect for washes because lots of places for the washes to flow into, um, and so it's a much much easier to avoid having the, that that blotchy finish when it dries with an inconsistent thickness. But of course, all the highlighting is still done with layering. So that's the the main difference there in the way that I did did the shading for each of them. So here I'm just base coating Garen and I started off using turquoise from Vallejo for the main part of his robe and then just that part that then runs around sort of the, the upper part of his shoulders and that I used Aram and Blue from Citadel. And in the actual bottle and the pot, they looked a little bit different. So I thought there was going to be, it was going to be easy enough to distinguish between those two colors so that they read as, you know, separate parts of his robe. But once they were laid down, they were actually basically exactly the same. And so what I did with the turquoise is I just mixed a slightly darker blue in with it as well, just to darken it off a little bit so that it did actually distinguish itself from the arm and blue around the shoulders because I didn't want it to be just the one color for his entire robe. I did want there to be a slight, you know, color difference there. And um, yeah, so that's why I then went back the second time and did, did a second coat for that part, um, just to darken it off a little bit. And so now I'm getting into shading his robes. And as you can see, I've just mixed in a really, really dark blue with the turquoise. And now I've just heavily thinned it down with some water so that every layer of paint that I put down doesn't make too much of a difference. And so I'm just going around to all of the recesses like I've been doing um, previously in this series and just putting the paint in the deepest part of each of those recesses and then cleaning the brush off. I'm a brush licker, so I do it with my mouth, but you can do that, you know, just by cleaning your brush off in your, in your water pot. And then with the clean wet bristles, then just feathering out the edge of the paint that's been put down and just feathering it away from where I want the deepest part of the shadow to be. So feathering it towards where the highlight is going to be on the rope. And so what that does is it just 
gradually thins the paint out as it moves away from where I want the shadow to be. And so it just creates a nice gradual blend so that then when I come to do the, the highlighting, which I am now, it becomes easier to blend it back into that shadow. And so I just went around and just did a couple of layers just until I had it as dark as I wanted it to. And so now here with highlighting, um, I've just gone straight back to the turquoise, which was the base coat, uh, the initial, sorry, base coat color that I used for this part of the robe. Now, I, I never go any brighter than just the turquoise for the highlighting. I never mix in a lighter blue or any white or anything like that because I, I was considering the fact that, so this turquoise color that I'm painting, as I mentioned earlier, is very, very similar to the Araman blue for the top part of his robe around his shoulders. And so because I knew that I was going to be lightening that off for the highlighting, I kept this as just the turquoise so that it never reached the same brightness as what that top part of his robe does. Um, because yeah, I still wanted to keep this part of his robe darker than the top part. So yeah, just a few layers of just the turquoise, build it up to the opacity that I wanted it to. That then created the contrast between the shadows of this part of the robe and the highlighted parts, but it never made it so light that it would then read as, a, as too much of a similar color as the top part of his robe. And then I just thought that there wasn't actually enough of a contrast between the shadow and the highlighted parts of for this part of the robe. And so rather than going lighter with the highlights, um, like as I talked about just before, I decided to go darker with the shadows so that I could push those contrasts further, but then still avoid the the top and bottom parts of his robe looking to be a, a similar color. And so I just mixed in some black with the turquoise and the dark blue just to really darken it. So I laid that just right down in the absolute deepest part of those recesses and then just feathered it out a little bit so that I kept it right in where the shadows were. Um, and yeah, that just boosted the contrast a little bit. And so now I'm just doing the shadows for the top part of his robe here. So I've just gone back to the arm and blue, mixed in some dark blue as well, thinned it down. And now I'm just layering it into each of the recesses. So again, just putting it where I want the deepest part of the shadow to be, and then just feathering it away from there towards where the highlights are going to be, just so that I can create, create that transition. Again, did a layer or two just until I built up the, the opacity and just the, the darkness of the shadow that I wanted to. Um, and now I've gone back to the Araman blue mixed in with some lighter blue to start the highlights. So this is how I create that differentiation between the top part of the robe around his shoulders and then the bottom part of his robe, because obviously we're now going much, much lighter with the highlights for the top part than what I did for the bottom part. But the actual process of highlighting is exactly the same. So it's thinned down, putting it where I want the brightest highlight to be and then feathering away from there so that it then just transitions and blends back into the base coat, which then blends into the shadows just to create those nice subtle transitions so that you don't end up with any solid defined lines between one color and the next. So it looks like that there is a, a, a gradual transition. And so now I've gone straight to that lighter blue that I use just to build the contrast even more. Um, and that was just concentrated really on where the light would be hitting the robe the most, and then just feathered out a little bit. And so now for the rest with Garen, it's just highlighting and shading his, his skin, um, and then getting on and doing a little bit of, of OSL on that orb thing that he's holding in his hands just to make it look like it is actually glowing and then um yeah casting some light across the the rest of his robes
So here I'm just starting to try and build the glowing effect of this orb thing that Garen has by taking the base coat that I used for the orb, which was the Glacier Blue, and then mixing in some white and then just concentrating this in the middle of the orb just to make it look like that part is brighter than the outer part. And so I just keep just, you know, just concentrating it in that, like a, basically a line straight across the middle and then just feathering it out just a little bit. And then I just kept mixing in a little bit more and more white but feathering it less and less and less until i was almost painting with straight white and then i basically just painted a line straight through the middle and didn't really feather it at all and that made the middle part of it look heaps heaps brighter than out towards the edge where his hands are and that just gave the the illusion that it was glowing a little bit and now i'm just doing the osl so again with that glacier blue and the white mixed in really really thinned it down and now I'm just going around and just starting to pick out all of the edges that would be catching some of this light. And then every subsequent layer just gets a little bit thicker and thicker um, just to try and build the opacity a little bit. And that lets me make it brighter um, the closer that it is to the actual orb, just to give the effect that the surfaces immediately around the orb are getting you know more intense light than the surfaces that are a bit further away just so that it feathers out and then reaches a point where there's just a really really soft glow a bit further away and then transitions out to the parts that are receiving no light at all from it and I've said this before, but I find it so much easier to do OSL on a larger scale mini with lots of edges for the light to be catching because it's easier to gradually transition the light from the really, really intense glow immediately around the light source to then dissipate out to where no light is catching any edges at all. But on a small mini like Garen here, where to scale you have quite a short distance to do that blend, it's just quite a bit trickier. I'm happy with how it did look in the end, but um, yeah, it does take a little bit more care to just make sure that blend happens nice and gradually. Um, but what I sort of do find often though is that you just kind of have lots of that intense light immediately around it and that transition out doesn't really work up close so much, but from a distance it does look all right. Anyway, we're done with Garen now and now we're on to painting Gretchen. Now with Gretchen's overall colour scheme, I did veer away from the artwork a little bit because in Gretchen's artwork, I think it shows the main part of her robe uh, being like a dark brown and then the cloak sort of thing that she's wearing being a lighter brown. But with Hugo, one of the other characters in the Mages Guild that I painted in the previous episode of this series, I did that lighter brown for his cape because that again that's what the artwork showed. Um, but I didn't want to have two characters from the same guild wearing the exact same coloured uh, cape uh, sort of thing because if they're both say their their back is facing both of you the color is going to be the same they're not going to be quite as easy to distinguish between and also I just wanted a little bit more color variation a little bit more visual interest out on the table so I stuck with a you know mid-range sort of brown here just the polished leather for the main part of Gretchen's robe but then as you can see here I then chose to do green for um, Gretchen's cape because no other character had green as their cape and it was just a good way to differentiate between some of those characters and add a little bit more visual interest. So that's why I sort of veered away from the, um, from the artwork there. Now one key difference between how I painted Gretchen from Garen, who you saw just before, is the way in which I do the shading. So as I was painting Garen earlier, all of his shading, shading sorry, was done with layering. So just starting with a you know darker version of what the base coat was, but then just heavily thinning it, thinning it down, and then putting it where I wanted the shadows to be, feathering it out towards where the light's going to be, and then coming back with more and more layers until I'd built up to the, the darkness of the shadows that I wanted. Whereas here you can see with Gretchen, I'm starting the shading with washes and I put washes down on the entirety of Gretchen. Now the reason why I use washes for all of Gretch Gretchen's shading as opposed to Garen's, which is just with layering, is because the 
folds and the creases and all of the recesses in Garen's clothing were much, much further apart than what they are for Gretchen. And also they were a lot, lot deeper in Garen, whereas with Gretchen here, they're much, much more shallow. But like I said, they're a lot, lot closer together with Gretchen as opposed to Garen. And when you've got recesses that are really, really close to each other, that's where a wash works really, really well because it gives lots of spots for the wash to flow into. But if you go back to Garen where the, the folds and the creases were much further apart, what that means is that you have a lot more smooth surfaces for the wash to just sit on. And when the wash is just sitting on a smooth surface, unless you've got a really, really consistent thickness to the wash, it's going to end up drying with a blotchy finish because you're going to have some darker spots where it was thicker and you know lighter spots where it wasn't as thick. So I used layering for Garen because I had lots of smooth surfaces and all those recesses weren't quite as close to each other. Whereas with Gretchen here, the washes work really, really well because those folds are really quite close to each other. And so there's a lot less smooth surfaces for the wash to just uh, kind of pull on and um, you know dry with an inconsistent thickness. Uh, and also though the those folds and recesses are not quite as deep as what they were with Garen and so yeah just um, layering was going to be a lot trickier because you got um, a lot less distance to gradually blend out towards the highlights so yeah so um, washes for Gretchen here because the recesses are really close to each other and m not quite as deep but layering with Garen because, well, it's the opposite because the, the recesses were quite far apart from each other and they were much, much deeper. And so being able to blend from the shadow through to the highlight was a lot, lot easier. But now that we're into the highlighting for Gretchen, from here it's exactly the same as with Garen. So just what I did is I went straight back to the, the same base coat color that I used before putting the washes down thin them down and now I'm just gradually building up to the level of highlight that I want. So starting with the base coat color, just putting it down where the light would be hitting and then just feathering it away from there to give a bit of a blend and a transition in the direction towards where the shadows would be. Just put down, you know, a layer or two of that until I had it the brightness that I wanted. And now you can see I've mixed into the polished leather one of my lighter browns just to start to lighten it off. And now I'm just concentrating this more towards where the light would be hitting the most at its most concentrated. And then just feathering it out a little bit less than the previous layer with just the polished leather. So that it'll now be brighter where the light's going to be hitting. Then it transitions to just the polished brown, which then blends into where the wash went down. And I just keep repeating this process. So just building this now up over several layers and just as I get to a, the opacity that I'm happy with, with a particular color, then just mixing in a little bit more of that lighter brown and then just repeating that process. So just putting the that brown mix down where the light would be hitting at its most concentrated and then just feathering it out, but less and less and less as it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And the exact same process is being done with the cape here. So I've gone back to the brilliant green, which was the base coat color for the cape. And this is going down over pretty much all of the the ridges, you know, the, the peaks of all of these folds, um, because really most of these surfaces are going to be getting some amount of light and then just feathering it out towards all of the, the lower parts of the folds where those shadows are just to get a bit of a shift from where the highlight's going to be through to where the shadow is. And now you can see here, I'm going to start mixing in some Viper Green into the Brilliant Green just to start lightening it off a little bit. And so this is now going again on the top of each of these ridges, but just not quite all the way down to the very, very bottom. For one of these larger ridges like this, um, it pretty well goes to the bottom, but you can see I stopped there, maybe about three quarters of the way down, and then just feathered it out towards the bottom, just so that it's concentrating the light around the, the tops of the shoulders, where most of the light's going to be hitting, and then gives a bit of a shift from you know the, the shoulders 
down to sort of the midpoint of the back and then down to the very, very bottom of the cape. So we get a, a blend happening from top to bottom, as well as from the top of the ridge through to the bottom of each of the, the folds, where, where all of those shadows are. And so now I'm going to straight Viper Green. And so now really I just keep this around the tops of, of Gretchen's shoulders. You can see the point there where I've stopped and now I'm starting to feather it out. And so now this is giving more of a shift from you know the, the brighter green on the top of the shoulders through to that uh, Viper Green, Brilliant Green mix in the middle, which then kind of goes to just the Brilliant Green right down the bottom of the cape but then it also blends towards the shadows as well just to smooth that out and that's as far as i push the highlighting there for gretchen's cape um i didn't want to go too over the top there because i didn't think with this kind of material that it would be getting too bright and i was just happy with the with the contrast that i had so now just doing gretchen's hair so Again, I've gone back to Stormy Grey, which was the base coat colour that I used for Gretchen's hair. Because um, as you would have seen, I put a black wash down over the Stormy Grey um, just to, for it to flow into all of those recesses and bring out the texture a little bit. So then the first stage of the highlighting was back to the Stormy Grey, the base coat colour. Picked out pretty much all of the, the raised areas, just all of the spots where the wash didn't pull. And um, now just uh, using the... Um, my stony grey, I think it is, just one of my lighter greys, just to pick out just some of the upper parts, uh, just to, yeah, um, build that contrast even more. All right, so with these last couple of finishing touches on Gretchen, like her eyes and base and those sorts of things, Garen and Gretchen are done. Um, I'm really, really happy with how both of these characters came up, especially when considering how small and relatively simple they are. I spent the vast majority of my time highlighting and shading both of their cloaks and robes and just the different parts of their clothing because there is some really nice detailing and folds in them, and I wanted that to be seen quite easily when they're in the middle of the table and everyone's sitting around the edge. But right through all of Wildlands, I'm really, really happy with these minis. They are all, you know, quite simple in the grand scheme of things, but they do have some nice detailing. And so they have been really, really fun to paint. And so that was the main thing that I focused right through each of these videos and these, these characters in the Majors Guild, just focusing on bringing out some contrast in their clothing so that the those really nice folds that have been sculpted into them can be seen from around the edge of the table. But that'll do us for this part of the series. I really hope you've enjoyed these videos. Please do give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button if you haven't to stay up to date with these videos as they keep coming out and stop by the Instagram and, and Twitter accounts where you can see work in progress images and you know things that are going to be coming up in future videos but with all that being said this is matt from the plastic canvas signing out happy painting everyone cheers